All right, so let's pick up right where we left off. Last time we looked at layout. We looked at the layout file. We experimented a little bit to see sort of how some of the, the XML in here corresponds to what's shown on the screen. Um, you know, we're not going even like taking a step into this rabbit hole, although it is super cool. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to um, add this missing link between the layout and our main activity. So currently the layout has uh, a search uh, widget, this search view widget, and that's essentially what uh, renders this component. What we need to do is set up the main activity so that when the search changes, we can do something because what we want to do is we want to use that information to update the UI. Okay, let's go over to mainactivity.java. I'm going to uh, shut off the emulator for the minute, for the minute, for the moment. Um, okay. So, and I'm going to essentially walk you through this. Um, so you'll notice here that there's this map view uh, component uh, and I uh, initialized this reference to be null and then down here in the onCreate method, which is sort of my constructor, I am uh, initializing that, um, that reference. I can do something similar with what's called a search view, right? So over here, if I go here, this is a component called a search view. That's, this is built into Android. So the map view component is part of this library that I'm using for mapping, but the search view is so commonly used that Android provides it um, along with the Android platform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say search view. Now, if I, uh, if I click on it, I have two choices. Now this is pretty important to get right because these are not compatible. If I go over here, I see I'm using androidx.appcompat.widget.searchview. That's like a, the, the difference here is that this allows me to build apps that are compatible with older versions of Android, essentially. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I'll call it search view and I'll, and I'll initialize it by doing the same thing I did before. So r.id, now I've got all these choices. So if I go over to my layout and I say, what was the ID that I gave to this thing? It was search. And so I'm gonna put, start typing search and you'll see that's one of the options because Android actually knows what IDs are used in this layout, which is pretty useful. So now I have a handle, I have a reference to this search view component. The next thing I need to do is figure out how to interact with it and specifically this is one of the several places in our app where we're going to interact or use what's called a callback. So here's the problem. A lot of times in the code we've been writing, we've been thinking about writing code in order to do a certain task, perform a certain set of actions. But there's other times when we wanna write code to respond to something else in the world. When we start building user interfaces, this is very common. So for example, a user clicks on a button and something's supposed to happen in the app. The way that we do this in Android is by registering what's called a callback. So what we tell Android is we say, hey, when there's a change to the search view, we want to know about it. And the way that Android's going to notify us is it's going to call a method. So let's do that. Okay, um, and again, I'm walking you through this, not something that I expect you to necessarily figure out how to do on your own. Now I have uh, a reference to the search view component. I'm gonna say search view set, uh, what is it? Set uh, one of these, it's one of these listeners, set on query text listener, that's what I want. So, and you can see that there are a couple of these different listeners that essentially uh, get called when different things happen. So the set on close listener gets called when I click the close. The set on, and, and maybe at some point we want to use that, but we're not going to right now. Um, set on search click listener, uh, it gets uh, called when I click on that little search thing to start the search. Um, focus change uh, gets triggered or that callback gets called when the focus of the element changes, like I click in or out of it. But what I actually want here is set on query text listener. Now, what I need to pass to this is something that, inter that implements, if I look at the uh, documentation for this, I need to pass it something that implements this interface. So this is a use of interfaces, which is kind of interesting, right? I need to pass it something that implements this interface. Now, I could provide an anonymous object here that implements the interface. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna pass this. Now, this is a reference to main activity. Now, you'll notice that this is a problem right now. This is a problem because 
this, the, whatever I pass to set on query text listener is supposed to implement a particular interface and this class doesn't, but there's a way to fix that. And what I can do is I'll say, make, make activity implement this interface. Um, so there's two things that are going to change here. I'm going to just click OK. Um, all right, so let's go up to the top. The first thing that changed is you'll notice that now, in addition to this interface, which we'll talk about, uh, we've talked a little bit about having something to do with networking and how the data moves around. There's this new interface that my main activity is implementing. The interface is called search view on query text listener. This allows this class to receive notifications or callbacks when the text in the search box changes. We're going to see how that works in just a minute. Now, to do this, to implement this interface, this is like implementing any other, any other interface. There's a contract that I'm entering into, and that contract involves implementing two different methods. We're going to see how these are different in a sec. So the first one, and there's override tags here. This is all like this all coming together, right? Um, so the first one is called on query text submit. The other one is called on query text change. Now this is just check style whining about the fact that we should have final here. So we do that and we're good. Okay, so this looks okay, but right now we have really no way of, and I could run the app and I could start with the search box and really nothing would be different. But let's put some logging in here to try to get a sense of how this is working. So I'm gonna put log.d, uh, this is debugging, I'll use my main activity tag and I'll say on query text submit, and then I'm gonna add the query string. And down here, I will use the same thing, except I'm going to put on query text change, and then in this case it's called new, I'm just gonna call these text. They don't need to have different names. It's kind of silly. Uh, okay. Text. Okay. And, you know, logging, a lot of times when you're working with a new system or a new uh, environment, like logging is a great way to just figure out like what's going on. Like how, you know, okay, I implemented the interface. Jeff told me to do that. Now I've got these two methods. Like what's happening here, right? Remember, our goal was that when the search box is used by the user, when the user interacts with it, we want to be able to update the UI. So the first thing that has to happen is we need to know when they make that change and we're using this callback pattern. We've now registered the main activity as a callback, um, essentially implementing this interface. And so whenever that text changes, these methods are going to be called. I've put some logging in here so we can see that in action. Now let's try. Okay, so I'm gonna run the app. I'm gonna open up my logcat here. I'm going to look for main activity. Um, and now let's pull this down a little bit so it's a, bit big, a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna click on the text and I'm gonna say test. Check that out, pretty cool. So what am I noticing? I'm noticing that whenever I change what's in the search box, doesn't matter if I you know, add white space, anytime this changes, this method is being called the method on query text change. Now you might be wondering what on earth is on query text submit? Well, if I hit return, you'll see that on query text submit gets called. So when I change things, when the user types stuff, uh, you know, testing, testing, one, two, three, every time there's a change, that callback method on query text change gets called. When the user hits enter, that's when on query text submit gets called. And there's actually a bug in Android causing this to get caused called twice, right? You know, isn't software amazing? It's amazing that any of this works sometimes when you really think about it. But anyway, I really should only get called once, but there's a bug in the emulator that causes it to be called, twi called twice, so it's called twice. But normally, when you hit return, that method gets called. Now, what we want to do, I'm leading you right up to the solution here. There's not a ton to do left, uh, but what we want to do is when the user changes the text, we want to feed that text into our search method that we built over the list of places. If that search method identifies a subset of the places, we want to change what's shown in the view to be only the places that match the search. If the search doesn't match, it, match any places, what we'll do is we'll keep just showing all of the places. You might decide to do something different, right? You might have a little pop-up somewhere that says no places, no results or whatever. For now, what we're gonna do is if the search matches some places but not others, only show those places. If the search matches every place or no places, 
show all the places, like every place that we loaded from the server. One thing I'll point out is to do this, you do not need to use this method. You should do, you should update this. This is sort of the modern, like people don't expect to have to hit enter anymore. That's like very 19, 1990s, I guess, you know. They expect search to work instantly. Like you go to Google, you start typing, you see results sort of on the fly. We're gonna have that same experience for our users. So as soon as they start using the search bar, they'll see the list of places updated as they type. Uh, which is which is pretty cool. So we're going to use on query text change. Uh, what I'll do actually, just to help me remember this, is I'll put this down here, um, and then I'll uh, I'll just remove that logging because I really just need to focus my work here on on query text change. Now, one last thing before we're done. What do the return values mean here? So that's interesting. Uh, so let's look this up. Um, I'm going to look up the document. Oh, if I hover over this, I'll see the documentation. Um, and essentially, the, the return value here is used to tell Android whether or not the default action should be used, right? So it's sort of like, if we handled this action, then Android should not do anything else, right? If we didn't, like maybe we just wanted to know uh, and we're not handling the action, then we should allow Android to handle the action. So on onQuery text submit, we're not doing anything, so we're just gonna return false. On onQuery text change, um, we should return true because we've handled that action. I don't think this is actually tested by the test suite, but it's just sort of the right thing to do here. Okay, so you have a little bit of work left to do, right? But we've established this really powerful programming pattern, which is what's called user interface callbacks. So a lot of times the way I design user interface, I create some component on the interface. In this case, I added the search bar by using the layout. And then I need to write code to do certain things when that component is used by the user. And a very common pattern is used what's called a callback, meaning I tell the system, hey, when there's a change to the text in the search bar, call this method. The way this is done in Java is by implementing that interface and providing an implementation for onQuery text change, which is then called by Android when the contents of the search view are updated. And then I can do my magic in here to update the list of places appropriately. So you're very close to being done with MB1. Congratulations, you have a little more work to do. If you get stuck, as always, you know where to find us. Good luck.